Hi everyone and uh, welcome to my uh, latest tutorial on how to make, paint and weather a fence panel in 1 35th scale. First of all you need to get yourself a sheet of uh, 0.25mm plastic card and what we're going to do is uh, square off uh, each of the sides uh, to make sure that the uh, fence panels are uh, in the correct shape. Now it's a matter of just using a metal ruler and a craft knife and then just gently keep dragging the knife down don't try and do this all at once otherwise you'll, you'll end up uh, curling the edge and try and keep the knife um, as horizontal as possible to uh, lessen the uh, bevel edge and as you keep scribing down eventually the uh, plastic card will start to uh, come apart and you'll have your straight edge so with the horizontal part done now it's just a matter of doing the same on the vertical as well so now we have a uh, nice uh, squared off sheet that we can now prepare uh, using a um, coarse file we just create some texture to the actual plastic card which will obviously be reinforced uh, on the actual planks fence planks as well and here I'm just uh, marking them off uh, they're three mil wide and then we'll do some at the other end as well and then again it's just a simple case of scribing each of the pence panels now don't forget this is just um, an idea it's entirely up to you if you want larger fence posts shorter fence posts um, longer ones it's entirely up to you but these are the basic skills that you need to to make the the, the fence po uh, planks so once you've done that just round off the edges using a file or in this case a sanding stick and again it just makes it look a that little bit more realistic once that's done we uh, take the craft knife and just add a little bit of texture and then as you can see we have the clean edge at one end and the broken edges down at the other end and then what we want to do uh, to add that bit of realism uh, we're going to actually uh, stick the uh, planks together and I've done this on a glass sheet um, so as and when the uh, glue dries as you can see it's still easy to pick up and it hasn't glued to the surface so there we have it a five plank fence panel which we can now start to add some more detail to so what I've done is got myself uh, a little bit of uh, plastic card strip and we'll use these as the strengthening uh, on the back of the uh, fence panel and it was quite easily done and again just add a bit of texture with the sanding stick and add in some wood grain not only to the strengthening bars but also to the uh, main planks themselves now what I want to do is to add a bit of detail uh, in the form of some rivets so we're using the RP tools rivet maker and as you could see these are 0.8 and I'm using pewter strip 0.15 mil and it's just a simple case of punching out some of the rivets and then what we'll do we add them on just using a small piece of CA glue and a cocktail stick or you can use a, a piece of wire whatever you're comfortable with and then just pick up each individual one and then add it to the glue and it's a very straightforward process And there we go that's all of the rivets on the back and the front as well and it's looking rather nice and i was quite happy uh, to call out a good day and to add some paint and we started off with some one shot primer for mig just putting down a, a couple of uh, thin layers and then once done i added some vallejo camouflage brown on top this is just using a uh, standard 0.3 mil needle in the airbrush making sure that all the edges are covered and then once dry it was just a matter of doing the other side as well now 
Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you different ways of, of painting and colors, etc. But again, this is your fence panel. Whatever colors you want to use and try, you go with. So there we are. That's all nice and dry. And as you can see, the texturing of the woods come out well when we did it with the uh, craft knife. Now what we're going to do is to add a little bit of uh, detailing to, to the paintwork. So we're starting with uh, a burnt umber and as you can see in a wash consistency this is all acrylic work at the moment we've covered the actual fence panel with that and that gives us a, a base coat to start from and then we'll add a bit more detailing with Vallejo German Black Brown and here I'm using a finer brush and what we want to do is to just create a little bit of shadow work again with a sort of wash consistency to the paint and we'll put that into the grooves and you can also add a few little splotches here and there just to uh, create the idea of some dirt. Don't have to be too precise here because everything will be blended in at the end. And there we go, we've got some nice shadowing coming along there and we've got some definition to, to each of the planks. Next we're going to do some Iraqi sand uh, to create some highlights. And here what we want to do is just sort of do very much a dry brush effect and we'll run that along the edges and as well as on the actual face of each of the planks as well. And there we go and that brings a lot more definition to the wood grain and that's coming along really well. Now we're going to use some tan yellow and more of a precise application with this brush and we're actually going to be doing some highlights around each of the edges of the uh, planks so this process was carried along all of the edges and all of the ends and there you go that's turned out really nice and then what we want to do is just to do the rivets using a bit of Vallejo burnt iron or any type of dark metallic paint that you may well have and just very uh, carefully paint each one of those rivets now what we want to do is to bring all of those colors together so using a uh, smoke uh, we'll actually create a uh, wash and cover the whole of the uh, fence panel with it and just to recap all of the uh, acrylic paints used were from Vallejo so once that had all dried um, it was a matter of uh, adding some uh, varnish some matte varnish and once that was dry I then added some um, hairspray two co uh, coats were applied and then using some Tamiya tape I decided to uh, create uh, a little bit of a, a painted look on the uh, wood panel itself and as you can see here uh, the first colour that I laid down uh, was a light blue grey and again lay this down uh, with thin coats one or two until you're happy with the way it actually looks being very careful not to get it on the other side because I just wanted this detailing on the front now you don't have to wait for it to dry all you then need to do is just to peel off uh, each of those um, Tamiya strips Now as you can see there's been a little bit of seepage there but that's not a problem because you've laid down some hairspray so what you can do is just get your, your brush with some water and scrub those off and there'll be no issues there at all. And then once I personally leave uh, Vallejo uh, to dry for one hour and then once that one hour is up I'll cover it uh, with uh, some water and then I get a uh, cut down uh, old brush and then what I'll do is put that in the water as well and then it's just a matter of uh, chipping off 
uh, and creating the patterns that you want. And there we have it, a nice chipping effect. And again, that was repeated over the whole of the panel. I was very pleased with uh, how that went. Now what I wanted to do was to uh, paint those stripes uh, white. So it was just a matter of uh, covering up uh, the areas again. I used a, an off-white called Insignia White. And again, once all the masking had been done with the Tamiya tape, I just lay down a, a couple of coats of um, paint again. Remember, you don't have to put any more hairspray down because you, you've already done the two coats. The hairspray does remain active for, for a few days. So if you're doing this uh, all together, then you're fine. And there we have it. Now, again, left for an hour. And then it was a matter of uh, taking the paint away and just trying to correspond it with the um, uh, worn out effects on the blue as well. So there was continuation. And again, I was really pleased with uh, how this all uh, went. And there we go, one fully stressed out and chipped piece of wood. Starting to look quite realistic now. And on the reverse, nothing's been done there, nothing's been changed, it's just on the front. And then finally what we do is add another coat of smoke just to blend that all in. Then again, another coat of matte varnish this one from Windsor and Newton and what this will allow us to do is to uh, do some work with the oil paints however if you don't want to do oil paint and you're happy with the look that you've got then that's fine but what we want to do is just add a little bit more texture and a little bit of weathering as you can see the uh, matte varnish uh, will protect the acrylic work that you've done and there's just a matter of getting your basic uh, oil palette uh, on some cardboard and then just using some dirt colors like raw umber, sienna and a little bit of thinner and just start adding some uh, dirt mark now on one end uh, we'll add a little bit of greenery there uh, to just to give it a little bit of age and it's just a matter of just building up oil layers and creating and improving that uh, distressed look of the wood Then on to the other side, uh, just to add some more highlights as well as some shadow work. So here I'm just adding some sepia. Uh, the oils that I use are Winsor Newton as well as 501 Abtalung. And just really just ha have a bit of fun with the oil palette and just add in the colors and shades that you want to uh, give you that distressed look. So once applied, it's sort of a wash format you just need to just blend it out until you're happy with the look that you're after and once this is all done it's just a matter of getting the hair dryer drying out the panel and then you can start adding on another color and in this case i was just going to do some uh, highlights so here i'm just using a, a buff color adding it and then blending it all in there we go so returning to the front now I'm going to be adding a little bit more layering on top just to tone down that greenery a little bit and then what I did I used a pin wash of sepia uh, to accentuate each of those panels and also some of the wood grain as well and that was pretty much the finishing touch so there we go the one fence panel um, I hope you've enjoyed this um, short tutorial on how to create make and paint a wood panel 
hopefully it's given you a few ideas so that you too can have a go and uh, see what uh, variations of this theme you can come up with and that just leaves me to say thanks very much for uh, popping in and uh, supporting my video channel many thanks to all of my subscribers and your ongoing support and happy modeling